What's up guys, it's Rogue to here and welcome back to yet another amazing video on the channel. Today I'm going to be showcasing one of the best trap decks this meta and a deck that's been around quite a long time and got help from the recent ban list. So without any further ado, let's get straight into this Altergeist deck profile. Starting off with the main normal summon of the deck, we got Triple Altergeist Marinatia. She basically is the best normal summon of the deck, sets you a trap and can tag out with your other Altergeist in Grave, like Multi Faker, and then get their effects. So she's definitely a 3 of. Moving on to the main girl here, we got Triple Altergeist, Altergeist Multi Faker. Just came off the list. Well, didn't just come off the list, but came off the most recent list to 3. Basically, the deck is back at full power because she's back at free. And with the new Altergeist support coming up, this deck, I think, has some serious potential in the future. So, obviously, Triple Altergeist Multi Faker brings you anything you need out of the deck. For another normal summon or special summon here, this basically is just our rotor of the deck. It's Triple Altergeist Metaseek. Basically, she, when she goes to the grave, she adds you an Altergeist card. And she also pokes directly and sends a card on the field to the grave, which is also really really nice and quite a bit of utility also level one so you can make link rebo and immediately get her effect for the two of here you just play two silk you don't want to play three of this you don't really want to draw it you just want it in deck so multi faker can bring it out and then you can do all your bounce shenanigans and then it recycles your trap when it gets sent to the grave so really good two of and then for our last altergeist here just the one concrete basically just when you're going to get attacked special her out and it blocks an attack and negates an, uh, an effect of a face up card in the field. Doesn't have to be a monster, can be like a spell, so useful utility. Uh, but nothing, not needed more than one. For our hand traps here, Triple Ash Blossom, we all know what Ash does. She's just one of the best hand traps in every format, and I play her at three because I think she's really, really good there. And now for the spicy tech, I'm playing two Ghost Bell. This can obviously be in the Biru, DD Crow, whatever you feel like. I'm just testing out this hand trap because. Invoked is a lot in the meta and Shadol too, and this just being able to stop your opponent banishing cards from the grave is, I think, quite underrated. So, yeah, I played two Ghost Bell. Moving on to the spells here, obviously, we're playing the best draw card for control decks in this, like Altergeist. It's Triple Part of Extravagance, basically, just draw two by sacrificing your extra deck, but in your extra deck, there isn't much that you need anyway. So, yeah, just an amazing consistency card of the deck and just a really good card in general. Moving on to other spells here, I play two Call by the Grave. I feel like Ash can hurt this deck a lot on the pot or on your multi faker. So I feel like Call by the Grave is useful at two because there is, with Pot of Extravagance, a lot of draw power here because we do play one upstart goblin as well to make this deck as consistent as possible. This card you might think overlaps with pot but remember this is a control deck so you're going to be stunning your opponent and you have multiple turns in your game so upstart goblin up using upstart goblin and drawing into a pot is actually not that bad because next turn you can just fire off a pot and draw two more cards so that's that's it for the spells not much spells at all here moving on to the best altergeist non-altergeist trap it is personal spoofing amazing card best altergeist because it's not really an altergeist card that there is shuffle you back anything into the deck and then add you whatever and then that immediately triggers your multi faker even if you add it from deck so and it's not once per turn either so if you have multiple you can do that multiple times to search multiple different alter guys so yeah nothing less than three for this card we're playing two protocol you don't need three because this is mainly what you set off your uh, marionetta just set it and then basically all your altergeist become spell speed 4 and they can't really negate the activations of anything and also has a useful effect by tributing one altergeist you negate a uh, monster effect and destroy it so useful and for the last altergeist trap here i just play the one uh, manifestation you can always recycle this back anyway with your siloquitis and anyway what you do is you activate this and then you immediately chain your Altergeist Soloquitis, so it basically gets put back to your hand or personal spoofing it away, and then it specials something out for free. So that's what you do with this card, you don't need it more than one. Moving on to the generic traps here, Lightning Storm is a card, guys, so we play <coughs> Triple Solemn Judgment here. This is basically just saying no to your opponent by paying half your life points. We play three of this because it will never kill you because it always just halves it. So yeah, this is the only Solemn package that we play. 
Moving on to another amazing trap. There is really no substitute for this trap in the deck. Um, going second, hitting an opponent's monster with this and then activating multi faker is so strong, guys. You can't understand. When that happens, you have your chances of winning the duel go up drastically because just an amazing card in general and getting multi faker out when you're going second in their turn. Just getting out like a Melisi, for example, for an ad next turn is just absolutely amazing. Now, these traps are up to preference here, but I do play two compiles and two crackdowns. Basically, I just needed some really good traps to trigger off my multi-faker. This just to steal stuff and then just hopefully interrupt. And this to just put back stuff to the hand or extra deck that they need for combos. Like for example, a construct, if they needed to go to grave to add something, just shoot it back to the extra deck. So that's why I play these. And for the last trap here, the one Imperial Order. This is a blowout card, this format. There's so many decks that rely on spells. And since you don't really, you only play five spells, this card is really, really good. Just an amazing card. We all know what Imperial Order does. It's that one for a reason. Just an amazing floodgate. So we're going to be moving on now to the extra deck here now. We play one Altergeist Prime Banshee. It's actually a really good card once you actually read this. Um, basically, shoot this stuff out the deck by tributing one. One is just all that's needed. I play triple Altergeist Hexia. Basically, you usually want just one to survive, and when you make this, it's usually GG's for your opponent because you could be negating spells, traps, and then when your opponent called monster effects, so really good card in general. That's why I play three, because we don't want them all banished by Pot of Extravagance. Moving on to the non altergeist cards here, we play one Moral Sword Dragon. This is for OTKs. Oh, this card has come up a lot of times when I haven't had it in the extra deck, and I basically added it in because it's like a game saver sometimes when you have lots of bodies on board and like a, a Hexia, for example, just three altar guys to make this and then altar guys just keep bringing themselves out. They're quite a bit spammy sometimes and then just go for game with also. Same reason why I have a topologic bomber. If your opponent plays a lot of monsters, you can just make this and then during your opponent's turn, trigger one, activate one of your traps, trigger multi faker and then especially under here and then just blow up your opponent's board. So that's why I think it's quite good. We're playing one Nightmare Griffin here. Um, I added Nightmare Griffin despite it not really seeing much play this meta because I feel like adding back traps when you need it is quite important. And the discards most of the time aren't that bad because you can always recycle if it's an Altergeist monster that you discarded or trap either with Soloquitis or with your Manifestation. So that's why I play one Griffin and the ability to just get a trap back that you really need like personal spoofing, for example. Actually, no, yeah, personal spoofing is a valid target or Imperial Order. Just, you know, important cards that you need. We're playing one in Gear Suit. We do play Crackdown as well, remember, guys? So we can make these monsters relatively for free. Just steal a Link monster and then use a, like, a Link Karibo, for example, with a Link 2 that you've stolen. Make this and send a card of your opponent, which is really, really strong because it's just sent and it doesn't destroy. And I don't believe it targets either. So really good card. Play it at one. Basically, the entire extra deck is just utility. Um, one Nightmare Phoenix, just in case you need to pop back row. You could be playing more of this if you really want, so you don't banish your one copy with Pot of Extravagance, but one for me has just been fine. It's not really, you don't really need it that much. Moving on to the Link ones here, I play two Link Karibo, one Relinquished Anima, and this can be an Al Mirage, but I play Clarica, Clara and Rushka. Basically, this is for your your level one altar guys to get it into the grave. Usually you want to normal it, attack and then make a link karibo and you get its effect to add multi faker that's basically why and if you're going second you can make anima instead and steal one of their monsters so just really good utility there and cleric and rushka is basically if you have an altergeist and you really need an engrave go to main phase two and then just use it like that as long as you normal summoned it so yeah that's why i play these cards basically even with part you most likely always have one that survives and then for our side deck here, because we do play Super Poly, we play two targets in the extra. We play one Shadal Construct. This hits a lot of the decks this format because with the new Dogmatica invoked deck that's going around, they usually end, they usually make the Winder and then they have a Mecha Burr as well. So this just absorbs both of them and is a nice way of getting rid of that, outing that. And our last target here is one Mecha Burr. So yeah, you can always super poly one of the Alistairs with one of your light monsters and then just make a mecha bar and have negates of your own and hope. 
So, yeah. That's the end of the deck profile, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed my take on Alter Guys. I believe this deck has a lot of future potential when the new cards come out. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. We also got a new Instagram account. That will be a link in the description. Make sure you give us a follow there. You'll be seeing all the sneak peeks of when we make videos and pictures and stuff. So, yeah, all the nice stuff will be there. So that's the end of the video, guys. Thank you for watching. It's time to... Let's go!